So I'm sure that uh, the most of the people here know a lot about Norway, but not so much about Latvia. And uh, that's why I will start with some general facts and about location and about the milestones which we reached during the last 30 years. So our history is a bit painful because of our great geographical location. Uh, many other countries through the history of through the centuries were very keen to come and to conquer us. So our geographical location is our advantage and our curse as well. So uh, about 750 years ago, when uh, German crusaders came to this area and brought Christianity to us with a sword and fire and with the Bible. So they, uh, of course, they saw that there is a very convenient place in the mouth of River Venta where they built the castle. And that's how the history of the port of Window, or later the Venstos, has started. Venstos mean a castle on River Venta. So, and uh, during the centuries, uh, we've been under the ruling of uh, Germany, Sweden, uh, Russian Empire, Soviet Union. So we were built uh, uh, on for 50 years with socialism together with our big brother Russians till uh, 1991. So uh, in 1991, when the Soviet Union has collapsed. So the three Baltic states restored the independence. So, and then we had a lot of big questions. How we sh can move forward? What is our place in the world? How we can make the transition of our economy? So all these questions, of course, were related also uh, to the port and its development. Because we have uh, quite a long coastline, as you see on the map, and we have three major ports, one in the Gulf of Riga, Riga port, another at Venstos port at the open sea, and the third, a little bit smaller port, Liepaja, on the southwest coast of the Latvia. So in 2004, Latvia became the part of the European Union and uh, also the part of the NATO. In 2007, we joined to Schengen zone, so it means that you can travel around all the European Union if you have the entrance to Latvia. In 2004, we adopted Euro currency, which is important for the small country and economy like Latvia. However, we not, by size, we have one th third bigger territory as, for example, Kingdom of Netherlands. And you know from the example of Netherlands that size is not the, the big issue. Yeah? So it's not the Netherlands reached excellency in many areas but whatever the size they have, yeah. So in 2016, Latvia also joined uh, to OECD, so as a member state, and um, we have a big advantage of uh, our long border with uh, Russia and Belarus, so we can serve as the hub for the business between Europe and between these countries. Of course, with the political tension, what we have uh, between uh, in the region now, it's a bit uh, less interesting to do the business with Russia. More we are now focused on Belarus and uh, Ukraine. So uh, by the population, Latvia is only 2 million people. And the size of the area is 65,000 square kilometers. So the density is population is uh, low. And so we are looking for the workforce which come in from the neighboring countries. The main source today is Ukraine, over 50% of the workforce which common for our industry is coming from Ukraine because for them it's also very convenient to come. But many uh, people speak Russian in uh, our country along with uh, English and along with German and French, of course, our own language Latvian. So uh, Ventspils is the second largest port city after Riga, and definitely the most successful uh, free economic zone in Latvia. Because at the beginning of 90s, when we developed the strategy, we decided to focus on uh, expansion of our port activity, so to build more terminals, to diversify the possibility to uh, uh, transship the goods. The second, the industrialization, of our uh, uh, free economic zone, 
And the third is developing of tourism. And today, Ventspils is not dark and gloomy, the, uh, just industrial city. It's a very nice place to come to spend holiday. Uh, it's very green, a lot of flowers. And so um, also we have uh, one of the greenest countries in the Europe because 52% of our territory is covered by forests. And it's also the base for uh, our, uh, one of the biggest industries, woodworking industry. So we are producing everything starting from uh, and exporting as well as uh, logs and uh, timber and uh, wooden pallets and furniture and uh, wooden houses. So it's definitely the, our area of expertise. So uh, as you can see, the uh, Ventspils is well incorporated in the trans-European transport network. And as well, it has the connection by railroads, very good connection with uh, Russia and the uh, uh, CIS countries because we have the same width of gauge, railway gauge, so-called Russian standard, 15, 20 millimeters. So it's serving very well for the transshipment of goods between the Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and the Western Europe. Also, what, how you can see on the map, we have the very short connection between Sweden and Ventspils. It's actually the shortest route, how you can reach the Sweden towards Nineshamn. It takes only eight hours for the ferry with the trucks on the board to reach the coast of Sweden from our port. We have 12 calls per week, which serves this destination. Also, we have the regular container line Sukonet, uh, operated by the company Sukonet between Ventspils and Rotterdam. So it's definitely the opportunity for those who are looking for the markets in St. Petersburg and Russia, because you know that the, the St. Petersburg port is quite congested and it's expensive. So it's the uh, other opportunity to come to Ventspils. So we have also a small regional airport that is serving most of the charter flights, but Riga International Airport is in 180 kilometers, and it's uh, really the regional hub and uh, the biggest airport in the Baltic states. So we have very good uh, network with uh, optical cables which are connecting all the parts of uh, Ventspils. Also, we have a uh, good uh, electricity connection grid with, uh, within Latvia and with the neighboring countries, so we can supply any production which is necessary. Uh, Latvia is also in top 10 globally for highest average speed on internet. So internet is very well developed. We, uh, that's why we also focusing on IT technologies in Latvia. So we need the high speed internet. So this is a view of uh, port, and uh, you can <coughs> see there are terminals along the mouth of River Venta. The oil and coal terminals are located just near the sea, uh, entrance to the sea, and we have uh, at the moment 14 different terminals. So we can serve any goods except LNG, which can come to our port uh, vessels uh, we have uh, big experience in oil products and uh, uh, crude oil. And nowadays, we are uh, making transshipment uh, uh, oil products only, but we even have the pipeline, which is connecting now us with Novopolotsk uh, refinery. So uh, in uh, Soviet times, Ventspils was the major port for the transshipment of crude oil and uh, the oil products for all Soviet Union. But now we have also modern uh, container terminal with a refrigeration facility with different temperatures. We have the modern grain terminal and uh, also the Ventspils is one of the deepest ports in the eastern part of uh, Baltic Sea with a canal 17.5 meters in the uh, area of the liquid cargo terminal and about uh, 15 meters in the area of the containers and the area of general <coughs> cargo. So um, what I see as the opportunity for Indian companies in uh, uh, our port. Of course, the port operations are in place and uh, for those who are looking for this part of the world, it's an opportunity to compare the fees and charges and maybe to change the uh, logistic route to Ventspils. You can find on our website uh, all fees and charges, what we apply to the 
to the ships, and uh, these are based on ba tonnage fees mainly. So it uh, ranges between uh, 32 cents and 83 cents, depends on the vessel, depends on the cargo, etc., per ton, per metric ton. So, but also uh, I'd like to focus on the industrial area, which is an uh, important part of the port, and which uh, gave us the gross 21 times in, in industrial output since 2002, when this program has started. And we also have uh, the export volumes have risen 40 times since we started this uh, activities in this area. So uh, the Port Authority can provide the land on, all, uh, on very uh, good terms. Uh, so also it can provide the modern industrial buildings for those who are keen to start the business in, in Ventspil. And if you are not sure how it will go, you can rent and later you can buy or you can, you can build on your own building in the area. So uh, this is one particular example of what we are building now, the premises in Ventspil Sky Technology Park, which is, uh, will be ready-made by year 2020. So the rents will be five euro per square meter plus value added tax and land lease you see is very, very low. So in case somebody would like to build something, so it's almost nearly two cents per square meter per year. It's a uh, very, very low price yeah, for this. So um, we have uh, created Ventspil Sky Technology Park and we are providing the consultancy service for the startup companies for uh, getting the funding. We have the financial institution called Alkin. This is the governmental institution. So we are complementing the private banking, what, which is available. For example, some companies can have the additional loan from uh, this institution, direct loan, or credit guarantee, or export guarantee. So a different kind of financial instruments which are available for setting up the business. and. Uh, why to choose Ventspils for Indian companies? If you want to have a European facility and you, can, you want to certify your products and services in European Union, then it's definitely the way how you can deal with the situation. So because uh, our costs are uh, pretty cost efficient, so we can offer the lower uh, prices as for example in Germany and in other countries but you can certify your products and services for all European Union. And you can use in all territory and uh, your product or services will be considered as European. So one opportunity we are now developing is fish processing cluster. So there are several land plots dedicated by uh, municipality for this uh, business and about 10 hectares. So it divided the different plots. Uh, there is uh, the freezer, fishing uh, freezer, uh, under development. So the company can uh, come and start their own operation. In case it's a serious business plan, the Port Authority is ready also to consider the building, the, the building for this company and uh, to rent it out for some period of time. So uh, definitely one area which we are developing is uh, uh, related to information and communication technologies. We have the construction of science and innovation center at the moment, which will provide the office area for IT companies. And uh, we set up a goal to have a European level hub for smart technologies. We already have certain companies who came in this area and started the, the business. For those who are looking for port operation, we have an uh, area which is dedicated for a new terminal, 100 hectares territory. So uh, it's uh, possible to be rented for 45 years with prolongation option for the same period. And taking into account the value of the rents, which I mentioned before, it definitely is a good option. So uh, there is a bit also about the uh, conditions of the rent of land for manufacturing projects. So it's about two and a half euro cents, including the tax per year. So a bit about taxation in a special economic zone. 
So if we compare the total tax rates, which should be paid by business in any country. So you see the, the uh, taxes which should be paid in Latvia, uh, profit taxes, labor taxes, and other taxes. At the moment, we have the plain corporate tax, 20% in Latvia. But if you come to, la to special economic zone, you have only 4% of the corporate tax, and in case if you are taking out the dividend. If you are living there, your profit in the company, you pay zero. And you pay zero in any other place in, in uh, Latvia as well, if you set up the company. So only in case of the dividends, you pay 20% corporate income tax or 4% income tax in uh, area of special economic zone. So there is no excise taxes, VAT taxes to the products which will be exported to other <coughs> European Union countries or other countries. So there is a small example about uh, how it works if you have the taxation in Latvia applied for the regular company or the taxation on profit in uh, Ventsov free economic zone. So you have the huge difference in profit tax. You will pay 172,000 less in this case. So a bit about labor and education. So the average salary at the moment is uh, 915 euro. So uh, the minimum salary is 430 euro. For the foreign uh, employees who are coming, there is the uh, according to the legislation, the employer should pay the average tax, not the minimum tax. So the local, uh, the minimum, ca uh, minimum uh, salary can be paid. Sorry, and for the foreigners, the average uh, salary should be paid. So we have the Ventsov Technical School, which is setting up the special program for the companies which were common in uh, uh, our area. So in different parts, metalworking, energy, electronics, so it's vocational level education. And also we have the university. And university is very keen to attract more foreign students. So they have international business and export management, business administration, IT technologies, electronics, language studies. So there are many opportunities also for Indian uh, students to come and to uh, uh, study in Ventsov. So a bit about industrial track record, what I mentioned. So biggest company which came in uh, uh, Ventsov in 2005 is uh, part of Zuhra Holding. This is a Swiss uh, company from Switzerland, which were looking for a place for its business in 2005. And they started in, uh, with a small, small actually premises, 1,700 square meters and 35 employees. So when they saw that the things are going well, they uh, expanded the operation. And in 2012, they bought the premises which they rented. They build uh, additional premises already on their own. So, and uh, now they have 12,000 square meters production area, as the slide you see here. And they are uh, producing this type of the uh, communal sweeper equipment, different types, which are exporting from Ventsov to every place in the world. So we have Belgian company, Malmar Sheet Metal, who is uh, preparing the parts for a uh, uh, automotive industry like Scania, Volvo, Caterpillar, MAN, and started operations in 2006. We have the world-class packaging company, which could be very interesting for the Indian companies who come because they can uh, find the good packaging solutions for the uh, products which they would like to offer for the European market. This is uh, my personal uh, so success story. Yeah, so <laughs> I brought this company to. Uh, this uh, West Coast area in 2016. So uh, we have the confectionery. This is the fourth largest Russian chocolate producer, which shows uh, Ventsov as the, the European facility. We have the company from uh, Germany, which is uh, producing plastic items for furniture industry. So we also have the company which is biggest in the region in production of biofuels, 
from Raid Seed, and ex uh, all these companies are working mainly for export. We have a uh, manufacturer of LCD panels with the biggest clean room in the area. We have uh, Hansa Matrix, which is a manufacturer of electronic components. And also, maybe only few uh, people know that uh, Latvia is now have the excellence in drone technology. So we have three companies which are uh, in uh, high level in this industry. And one of the drones are produ uh, produced uh, exactly in Ventsov in this company. So the latest uh, addition to our industrial uh, companies is company Wasserkabel Baltic. It's a German, uh, Latvian and Chinese joint venture. So we managed to put together the technology from Germany with the Chinese and local investment. So it's an energy efficient heating and cooling technology, Revian heating and cooling technology. This is a new energy efficient trend in the uh, cooling industry. And uh, I'd like to thank you to, to government of Norway for their support because this company received the uh, substantial funding, about 500 euros from uh, the fi a Norwegian financial instrument, which was available for green technology projects. So it's a kind of example. We are thankful, uh, thankful to our regional partners for the support. And uh, so it's still uh, open, this uh, finan funding instrument for uh, some projects in Latvia. So about bit of quality of life and international acknowledgement. So uh, as you can see, the, we have many places for uh, tourism activities. We have Blue Flag Beach so the people can come and spend time and holidays in our city. So um, in uh, the, what the others say, say about us. So in, uh, since 2010, the uh, Financial Times uh, FDI magazine, they are making the research about the sport zone. So in uh, 2012-2013, they in the report they wrote that Ventsov is seventh best special economic zone and second best sport zone in the world, between 700 zones. So we got uh, also award on second best FDI strategy among micro European cities of the future. So it seems that we are moving in the right direction, and others also see this and evaluate the, the, our efforts. So this is the end of my presentation. I'd like to show you also a small video about the port and the operations because my presentation was more focused on uh, the industrial part. And so as I told, this is a real opportunity for Indian company to set up a European facility for uh, products and uh, services which are dedicated for the European market. And we would be happy to have the delegation of the uh, Indian entrepreneurs to show the uh, opportunities what we have. And uh, uh, so thank you for your attention. And uh, I'll now put the film. So. Transpilsport is located on the eastern shore of the Baltic Sea, a location where markets of the east and the west have intersected for centuries. This has always been an important factor in involving Ventspils in global trade processes. Ventspilsport has a history spanning more than 750 years. The name of the Port Portus Winda appeared in shipping registers and ancient maps long before the Ventspils Castle which gave its name to the town, was built. The history of Ventspils sport is enormously rich and varied. Its influence in the Hanseatic League, the world-renowned shipyard of Duke Jacob, and status as the main port of Tsarist Russia should be mentioned in this regard. Ventspils became a pan-European transit center in the early 20th century, when work was completed on a railway link connecting Moscow, Rybinsk, and Ventspils. The strategic importance of the port was also appreciated by the Soviet government, who opted for Ventspils as the site for building the largest oil terminal in the Baltic region. 
the pipeline Druzhba connected the port to the oil fields of Russia. In the 1970s, more terminals were built to handle potassium salts, ammonia and other cargoes. Ventspils is an ice-free port. Thanks to this fact, we can provide services and ensure navigation throughout the year without any additional costs during the winter month. Complete upgrade of the port was done in 1998 by deepening the harbor to the maximum possible depth in the Baltic Sea, 17 meters. It allowed to optimize the costs of the entire Ventspils transport corridor. Now the largest ships that can enter the Baltic Sea can be serviced in Ventspils. Today, Ventspils is a part of the European Union core network for transport. Thus, Ventspils is linked to the European road network, including the E22 motorway, which is of European importance and takes its route from Ventspils to Moscow. The east-west rail corridor, with throughput capacity of 34 million tons per year, is one of the busiest rail links in the Baltic region. Ventspils has a regional airport which is equipped with the necessary technology and infrastructure to service small business aviation and air taxi flights. However, the Riga International Airport, with more than 80 international destinations and more than 200 daily departures, is only two hours drive from Ventspils. The port terminals in Ventspils can handle all types of cargoes. Ventspils has always been strong in handling liquid bulk cargoes. Ventspils Nafta Terminals is partly owned by the VTTI, a global player in the operation of petroleum product terminals. The company has more than 50 years of experience in the reloading of crude oil and oil products, state-of-the-art technologies and the largest storage system among the terminals in the Baltic Sea region ensured that the Ventspils Nafta Terminals is one of the most competitive companies in the Baltics. Ventbunkers handles oil and petroleum products. The company offers forwarding services, treatment of ballast and wastewater. Vent Ammoniac Service owns the infrastructure and equipment for the storage and transshipment of oil products, ammonia and other liquid chemicals. A joint venture named Vars has been established in collaboration with the Lukoil Chemical Company to handle acrylic nitrile. The newest liquid cargo terminal at the Ventspils Freeport is the Baltic Juice Terminal. The terminal offers services related to the reloading of vegetable oils and other liquid nutrition products. The Ventspils Freeport has a wealth of tradition in handling dry and general cargoes. Ventspils Commercial Port has a history in cargo handling that dates back more than 100 years. Today, Ventspils Commercial Port offers clients a whole range of services related to dry and general cargoes. Deep water piers can handle Panamax-type ships. Kalia Parks is a dedicated terminal for handling mineral fertilizers. It is one of the world's capacious terminals of its kind. A high-capacity warehouse system makes it possible to store six different kinds of mineral fertilizers at a time. A modern multifunctional grain and feed storage facility, Ventspils Grain Terminal, offers import and export transshipment services for various kinds of grain and feed. It also operates a state-of-the-art grain and feed trade association certified laboratory for on-site quality check of the stored products. Timber materials at the port are handled by the company Ventplatz. It mostly handles technological chips for pulp manufacturing, round wood, sawn logs, timber for the production of paper, firewood and peat moss. The most modern and largest closed storage coal reloading terminal in the Baltic States, the Baltic Coal Terminal, can accommodate the largest coal carriers entering the Baltic Sea. The terminal has capacity of 6 million tons of coal per year. Ventspils Port is perfectly fitted to be a strategic hub for general cargo transportation in the logistics chain between the Europe, Asia, Russia and other countries of the CIS. The port is a home to a high-level and multifunctional cargo handling center Nord Nati Ventspils Terminals, which handles a wide range of general, containerized and roro cargoes. The terminal has deep water keys, modern and specialized equipment, an excellent infrastructure, open and enclosed warehouses, a custom and border control facility and a site for phytosanitary inspection. 
There are also connections for refrigerated containers. Mansfield Sport has established all the necessary infrastructure and is very well fitted for transportation of heavy and oversized cargoes. The terminal has the necessary equipment and expertise to handle even the most sophisticated projects. Reefer Cargo Terminal with more than 12,000 square meters state-of-the-art temperature control warehouse facility offers service for frozen and cooled product storage and transshipment. The newest terminal at Mansfield Sport is the Euro Home Universal Terminal. The terminal with its deep water key is capable to handle diverse types of general and dry bulk cargoes and has particularly specialized in transshipment of pig iron. Over the years, Ventspils has become a significant center for ferry transport and the major gateway for trucking to and from Scandinavia. Stenaline, with several daily departures, operates a route to Stockholm area, the port of Ninasholm. This makes possible to service one of the busiest regions of Sweden and opens up the route to Norway. This is the shortest sea route between the Baltic states and Sweden, just 8 hours shipping time each way. The further port expansion foresees seaward development of the port in the so-called the Northern Port Project. The Northern Port is more than 100 hectare territory adjacent to the sea with a possible landfill extension to the north of the existing harbour. Vanspils Freeport is more than just a harbor. This millennium started with dynamic industry and manufacturing development in the special economic zone of Vanspils Freeport. Besides the available greenfield areas, Vanspils High Technology Park offers high-quality manufacturing and office facilities, as well as business incubator support for new companies. The park also works extensively with educational and scientific institutions so as to facilitate cooperation between science and industry. Companies at the Ventspils Freeport can enjoy the special economic zone benefits. Tax relief together with infrastructure support from Port Authority has allowed to create favorable investment environment. The Special Economic Zone is winning high awards in the reputable British Financial Times FDI magazine series, even scoring as the seventh most prospective Special Economic Zone and the second best port zone in the world. It is an outstanding evaluation, placing Ventspils on top of more than 700 Special Economic Zones worldwide. Ventspils brings together high-level industrial development and high-quality port services. Ventspils today is a flourishing European city. The industrial status is supplemented by cultural and historical heritage, with contemporary art projects, facilities for leisure and sports, as well as extensive educational resources. Vocational and professional, as well as higher educational institutions, are working to harmonize the needs and trends of the industry with the availability of skilled people. Ventspils is the city that supports business, a port city with lower taxes and an individual approach to each business. Ventspils is the right place for your business. Welcome to Ventspils.